Hey there, THP 494 and 598 Matthew here. So we're going to take a look at the very special use case scenario of how we deal with touch OSC in this particular environment and what this means for us. Uh, so to get started here, let's first uh, go ahead and open up a new network. Let's add a new base and let's dive on in here and let's get to the hard work of actually starting to pull all this stuff apart. So uh, first things first, I'm going to add a table to that because there's a bunch of information that I'm going to want to have handy here for uh, for me. And in this case, what I want to know is I want to know my device. Uh, I want to know the IP address. I want to know the port or the import, incoming port that is, and the outgoing port for those devices. I've got a PC that I'm working with and I have an iPad that I'm working with. All right, so I've been already used IP config uh, to go ahead and figure out uh, what it is that my uh, IP address is on this particular device. And so I highly recommend that uh, you track that down. In my case, uh, on my little local area network here, uh, this device's IPv4 is 10.0.1.12. The iPad, and I can find this information on the iPad uh, by InTouchOC using a little um, kind of settings button there in the upper right hand corner and go ahead to the OSC page and I can see that its address is going to be 10.0.1.2. That's excellent. I'm also going to take note of the fact that on the iPad that the outgoing port is 9000 and the incoming port is 8001. So 8001 is going to be my in port and out port is 9000. Excellent. So I'm going to save this information. It's going to be important for me to have this here in one hot second. Okay, so first things first, let's just get some data streaming in here for us, right? So let's add an OSC in chop. An OSC in, not out, excuse me. And now what we need to do is we need to specify which port it is that we want to listen to. So the iPad is broadcasting, right? Its out port is 9000, which means we need to listen on port. 9000. Now once we've done that here back in Touch OSC, we can head back to the interface page and we can start to see that when we move our interface here, that sure enough, we get some information that streams for us right on over to uh, our computer, right? So we're actually catching here in Touch Designer all of the things that are happening here when I interact with this particular physical interface. Master corresponds to the page number here, right? When I'm thinking about how I'm, this is formatted, and then slash mix, slash level, slash red, green, blue, red, green, blue, excuse me, corresponds to the labels for these things. Now that's incredibly useful for me, and uh, right, like it's not hard for me to think about how I might start to use this, uh, right? So I might have a movie file in, I might have two movie file ins, and we'll just take a look at one simple little use, right? So let's say that we have two different videos, and we've got um, maybe a cross that we want to drive. The banana goes in one inlet. The uh, flower goes in the second. And then here from our OSC, and in fact, probably what we'd want to uh, do is we want this attached to a null, just in case we want to make any changes or do any kind of math, is that we could use the mix, for example, here to then drive the cross value here. Excellent. So now we can see that as we drive mix left and right, we are in fact manipulating what's going on here inside uh, of the application that we're building with Touch Designer. So we can really start to go crazy now with how we think about building interfaces that live on devices that are detached physically um, from our actual machine where we're doing all this work. So this is all well and good, but what happens if I want to start to build ways of communicating back to my physical device? Well, in that case, I want to use an OSC out. So in my OSC out, I need to know the IP address for the machine that I want to talk to. And in this case, it's the iPad. So I want to talk to 10.0.1.2. And the port that I want to send to is 8001. So I'm going to broadcast to 8001, which happens to be the listening port on my iPad. 
Now here, let's go ahead and add just a constant. And this constant we're going to attach here to our OSC out. And let's say for whatever reason that I want to actually be able to drive this uh, level um, slider, or this slider named level, right, this one right here, I'd like to be able to drive that actually from, um, my, from Touch Designer rather than from uh, OSC. Uh, we can certainly do that, and I just need to make sure that its name is formatted in a way that matches the incoming channel. So I can see here that master slash level is what corresponds to this slider. So here in the name, if I have master slash level, if I start to drive this slider, I can see that I'm moving it over here in Touch Designer, or excuse me, over in Touch OSC. Now it's important for me to take note of this little uh, flashing light up here in the corner. So the red light indicates an incoming message, and the green light indicates an outgoing message. So this uh, flashing red light, um, right, this uh, message here is telling me that I'm constantly getting information, so I can't actually override this, because Touch Designer is constantly sending that information over the network. Uh, so one thing for me to consider in my OSC out is that instead of time slice, I might send samples, and I might choose not to send this every cook. And what that's going to do for me is that then means I'm only actually sending this information, and we can pay close attention to the little red light here. I'm only sending this information when I actually make changes, and this also means that I can now override values here in my touch device. So this gives me, this opens up opportunities for me to think about how I might have an interface that I manipulate here on this device and an interface that I can manipulate in Touch Designer and how I might start to build feedback systems that communicate back and forth between the two of those things. Now, there's a lot that we can start to dig into, right? Like, it's really tempting to start to just uh, build an application that um, draws on what this interface does, and I'm going to resist that temptation uh, for just one more hot second, because the other thing that's important for us to think about is how we can control different kinds of elements here. So, certainly there's lots of different uh, pieces to this puzzle, which are excellent and very exciting. Um, but it's not hard to imagine how we manipulate floats or integers. That's pretty straightforward, right? We can certainly do that with the OSC chop. But what if, and you know, maybe I'm just talking crazy here. What if what I wanted to do is I wanted to change some of these things like level, mix, red, green, blue. What if I wanted to change those actual names? Could I do that? And certainly we can. So to understand how we get there, we're first going to actually look at um, the Touch OSC editor. So, so Touch OSC Editor is a free application. You have to pay for Touch OSC that lives on a mobile device. Uh, but the editor for actually making interfaces is free for you to download and use. And a quick plug for Hexler, uh, if you want to play with this, is actually head to hexler.net, and you can find it here at the bottom. Uh, Lemur is another OSC interface, which is also excellent. Um, I don't have a particular preference. I've been using Touch OSC for longer, so that's the one that I'm talking about. But really, pick your poison. Either one of these is going to be a blast to use. So important to know here is that when we start to actually look at how these things are made, we can see that their address, their OSC address, is listed for us when we're working with these elements. So here I can see that slash 1 slash label 9 is actually the address for this particular thing. Well, how then can I start to take advantage of that? Well, we can start to take advantage of that in this way. So let's go ahead and add an OSC out dat. Let's add a text top or a text dat, excuse me. In our OSC out, let's go ahead and make sure that we're talking to the right place. So we want to be talking to 10.0.1.2, and we want to be broadcasting to the port 8001. Excellent. And now uh, we want to put together a message. So in this case, I want to talk about level. So level, we're going to do just simply as a little list. And I'm going to put a string in there, hello. And this will make more sense here in one second once we start to pull us apart. So I'm going to use the operator OSC out to. I'm going to use this operator to send a message. I'm going to send OSC. And now here in this header, this is where I'm going to start to take advantage of what I learned here from my touch OSC editor. So this slash one slash uh, label nine 
is actually what I'm going to use for the header. So slash one slash label nine label, excuse me, nine, right? That's actually what I want to change and comma, I want to change that with level. So here with any luck, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this string right here and I'm going to send that over to this device here and I'm going to change this thing called level. So let's see what happens. Let's see if that actually works. Let's run this script and sure shooting text, that thing changed right there. So we could change that back, right? Level LEV. It isn't hard to imagine how we start to do this, right? Run. I can change that, which means if I know all of these things, all right, so there's lots of information that m might be like a little bit of information overload, but hold on to all of that and uh, more later, everybody.